Okay, so welcome again to our encounter series, and it, and this is now the third night. So hopefully, uh, for that for the past two nights, you had been blessed by what um, had been told you, not by me, but of course by our faithful God through His Word, and hopefully, it it gives us you know a little bit inspiration. Hopefully. So right now, I would like also to invite again those who are um, listening online. We are inviting you as well to open your Bible with us as we study again tonight God's Word. So let's again bow down our heads and let us pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we would like to praise you and thank you for this opportunity. May you help us once more. Give us humble and teachable heart. Please, Lord, help us to be reminded of our identity. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I start the message this evening, which is entitled Identity, The Encounter at the Sea. So basically, this is the story of one of the disciples. Later on, you will, you will know him. But before that, I would like to tell again a story. Um, two weeks ago, I had this struggle. And, you know, most of the times, if you... Like for example, me as one of one of the um, let's say in Master Guide, I'm one of the one of the leaders in Master Guide, or maybe because I'm a, a theology theology student, I am one of, of uh, the students in College of Theology. Might be some of us or or some of my friends thought that I'm I'm not struggling. Maybe they're thinking that I'm okay. But I came to a point in my life, that was two weeks ago, that I found out that I have this identity crisis. I found myself living at the shadow of people's expectation. And you know what? There came a time in my life that two weeks ago, there came, there came and that's why I really like to, to tell this story because I really want people to know that I am also a human being, that I am also vulnerable, and that I had these struggles, weaknesses, and I can relate with how you are struggling also with yourself, with sin and with temptation. So two weeks ago, there came a day when for, for almost 30 minutes, I only cried everything to the Lord. And if, I, if I'll be collecting those cries, I think I could, I don't know, I could collect uh, two 1.5 gallon of, know, of, of, of tears. So I, I really cried a lot. I really cried a lot. I will not tell you anymore the, the, the story, but the main point, I'm struggling with my identity. Because that moment, I, I saw myself, because I am, my, my temperament is melancholic. So, because, of course, that is not an excuse, but naturally, by tendency, as a melancholic person, we used to think, you know, even though the things, uh, parang hindi naman na kailangang isipin yung bagay, but we overthink things. So, that moment, I came to a point that I saw myself living in, in people's expectation and I don't know what to do. I'm just crying it out to the Lord that finally God told me. With a book entitled, hopefully you can buy that in, in book sale. I, I bought it in, uh, in book sale. The title is, um, nalimutan ko tala yung title. Um, prototype. Now, Jonathan Martin, that the, the author is Jonathan Martin, Prototype. You can, you can uh, buy it in book sale. And I learned in that book that the only difference that I have with Jesus Christ is that Jesus never forget his identity. And I was inspired and encouraged by that verse because God is telling me you know what, son? You don't have to 
meet people's expectations. You don't have to be someone to, to them. You only need to believe that 2,000 years ago, I came here on earth telling you that you are my beloved. And that same word was the word that Jesus heard when he was baptized. This is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. And every time Jesus came to a point of losing that identity, of being tempted by the, the, by the devil, and when he came to his, you know, point of, of death, there's no other way, and there's no other word that he, he, he remembered at the time. And that is that, those words when, she, when God told him, he is indeed his beloved son. This evening, I would like to tell you a story. This, sto- this is a story of one of the disciples, and that is no other than John. And we used to call him what? John the what? The beloved. I'll be telling you this evening, why is it that though there is no such verse in the Bible, that John is indeed the beloved, but we used to call him John the Beloved. And basically, that would remind us tonight that we are actually beloved of God. And that is our identity. The story begins in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 to 18. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, and that's why it is an encounter at the sea, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Verse 19, and he said to them, what? Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And verse 20, 19 to 20, and he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Verse 21, and going on from, the, from there, he saw another brothers, another two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and who? John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and Jesus called them. Of course, Jesus told them, follow me. And what had happened? In verse 22, it says, immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And the story change the whole life of John. You know what? If I'll be comparing John with Peter, there are a lot of differences between Peter and John. And most, and, and the most, tama ba yung grammar ko? Yung pinaka, pinagkaiba nila is that Peter has a lot of stories in the Gospels while John can rarely be seen in the whole gospel. You can count with your hands, with your fingers, the stories about John. But the story about Peter, I'll tell you, there are a lot. But this is interesting. This is interesting. Why? Because despite of the fact that John has only few stories in the gospels, he is one of the writers in the Bible who wrote a lot of letters. First, he wrote the book of the Gospel of John. Second, he wrote three what? Three letters. First, second, third John. And aside from that, he is the, also the disciple who wrote what? The book of Revelation. But you know what? Interestingly, saan man do sa mga book na yon, you will never find his own name. Even at the Gospel of John, you will never find the name of John himself. John the Baptist, you can find there, but John the Beloved, you can never find it in his own book. But I would like to tell you this evening that despite of the fact that John did not mention his name, 
He mentions something about himself which identifies his Id identity that was given by Jesus to him. Let's go to John chapter 13, verse 23. It says here, one of his, so this evening we will be having again three observations, then we're done again. One of his disciples, and what's the next word? Whom Jesus loved was reclining at table at Jesus' side. 30, uh, 21 verse 7. That disciple whom Jesus loved. Verse 19, I think. Sorry, di ko matanda yung verse. Next verse. Okay, next verse. Okay, hindi ko napalitan yung verse. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved. Three times in the Gospel of John, John mentioned nothing of his name, but he mentioned about himself, and that was, he was loved by Jesus. And you know what, my friend? You know what, my friend? This is very interesting because this person named John, whom he called himself in the Gospel of John, the beloved, that's the someone whom, whom Jesus loved, is the only person in the whole Bible who wrote profoundly about love. Remember your favorite verse, John 3.16? For God so loved the world. And you can only, it is only in the book of John that you can find when, when Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And it's only in the book of John that you can find when, when Jesus told the disciples, love one another. And it's only John who wrote three letters, first, second, and third John, and all of those letters are all about love. 1 John 4, 8, God is love. Someone, someone who did not mention his own name in his letter understood the profoundness of the love of God towards him. Because what? First observation John knew it very well that he was loved by Jesus Christ. Friends, this evening, I would like to tell you, the first, the first thing you need to know about your identity is that you were loved by Jesus. Okay, Dominic, how come that Jesus loved me when I am a sinner? Actually, it is because you are a sinner that makes you more lovable to him. But you did not do something. You did not do anything for you to be loved, to be loved by Jesus. It is simply because God himself is love. And you can never change that character of God. And you can never change his look at you that you are his beloved. Second observation. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Now, I would like to tell you this evening that there is a book of Genesis in the New Testament. And that is no other than the book of John. Remember the first word, words in, the, in Genesis? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void. And verse 3, and God said, let there be light. Interestingly, if you're going to read John chapter 1 to 5, this uh, verse goes like this. In the beginning, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. Creation. Verse 4, in him was life and the life was the light of man. And verse 5 says, 
The light shines in the darkness. Remember in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it says there that darkness covers the whole earth. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Now I'm asking, when I'm reading this, I'm asking, why is it that John needs to, wrote, to write these things when in fact, there's nothing you know, interesting about remembering the creation, the creation account. But I found out that because John was, you know, really captivated by the love of Jesus, he even wrote these sentences, these verses, just to remind us that aside from being loved by Jesus, John was being reminded that Jesus' second observation created him. And it makes a difference when you, sisters and brothers, know that you are created or you were created by God. It makes a difference. Third observation. Third observation. And you know what? This is interesting because it is only in the book of John that you will find Jesus never touching any person. In the book of Matthew, you will always see him touching those who are sick. In the book of Mark, in the book of Luke. But it is only in the book of John that you will find Jesus not touching person, but just telling them, just, just you know, speaking to them, and they will be healed already. Why? Because remember, in the creation account, God never used his own hands. Aside, uh, of course, in exemption of Adam when he was created. But for six days, God created the world by just his words. Third observation, John 1.29. The next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 1 verse 35 and 36. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, this is very interesting because it is only, again, it is only in the book of John that you will find Jesus being called as the Lamb of God. Wow! John is very, you know, very rich of words, of thoughts about Jesus, that it is only him who recorded these things. Why? Because it is only him as well who was really captivated by that love. Of course, other disciples also was, you know, was transformed by that love. But I believe that when, when, when John was called by Jesus at that moment in the sea, I believe it is not only in the words of Jesus telling him, follow me, but it is, only also, it is also in the word of Jesus telling him, I love you, John. I love you. And I can even give my life to you. And then John told the disciples, the people and the believers that time, Jesus is the Lamb of God. In the Bible, when we say the Lamb of God, it reminds us of a sacrifice. It reminds us of a slain sheep, a slain lamb without blemish being sacrificed in behalf of our sin behalf of humanity. Because in third observation, John was reminded that aside from being loved by Jesus, aside from being created by Jesus, he also remembered that he was redeemed by Jesus. Brother Dominic, so, what's the point? Friends, I would like to tell you this evening, even today, God is using the same thought. Jesus is using the same truth for us to be reminded of our identity. Remember in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Why do you think those verses or this verse started with the word remember? You know why? From verse 19 going down to verse chapter 19 going down to chapter 1 of Exodus that was the experience of the Israelites going out from the land of Egypt to the land of promise. But before coming to the land of promise, they were able to come first to the, to the mountain of Sinai and there God reminded them of their covenant with him. Now, interestingly, when, when God told them, remember, when God told them, remember, there is reason why he needs to, remi to remind them of this day. For 430 years, how many years? For 430 years, the Israelites were exiled in the land of Egypt. And they, they don't have any choice but to serve the Egyptians. And actually, it is them who made the pyramids. And that's why Israelites in the land of Egypt, they, they're being called the bricksman. And if I am a if I am a, a, a Jew, a Jewish boy, if I am a children or a child of a Jew, and, I'm, and I ask my father, 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 what is your occupation? And if, I, if we were in, in Egypt, my father will tell me, I am a bricksman, son. Then this son will ask his grandfather, Grandpa, what is your occupation? I am a bricksman, brick son. And then this, this son will ask his mother, Mother, what is your occupation? I'm giving birth to the bricksman, son. And when, when the pyramid was done, when the bricks was gone, then what happened next? They are useless. Because basically, the reason why they are there is for them to serve the Egyptians. So if there is no more job for them, they are useless. They are useless. But you see, when they came to the Mount of Sinai, God told them, remember, the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why? Because in six days, verse 11, the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 12, observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why? Because in verse 15, I took you out from the land of Egypt. I saved you. The same reason John the Beloved remembered when Jesus told him, I love you, John. He remembered that he was created and redeemed by Jesus. The same reason was given to Israelites. Child, I created you and I redeemed you. And I would like to remind you today that every Sabbath day, I would like you to keep it holy by not going back to your work, by not going back to your personal occupation, personal, you know, personal thoughts, personal uh, agenda. I would like you to be with me during the Sabbath because the Sabbath day reminds you of who you are and you are my beloved. And every Sabbath day, that is the reason, friend, that is the reason the Sabbath is not just a form of day for us to go to church. It is a day for us to be reminded of who we are. And that's why the Sabbath day is so important to God because it is His way for us to be reminded that 2,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, there is this God who created us and there is this God who redeemed us. And he keeps on telling us, remember the Sabbath day. Why? Because I would like to tell you, you do not belong to who, to what you do. You belong to me. 
You do not belong to your studies. You do not belong to people's expectations. You do not belong to what they want you to do. You do not belong to your boss. You do not belong to your office. You do not belong to school. You do not belong even ministers. You do not belong to church. You do not belong to conference. You belong to me. You are my beloved. And this Sabbath day, I would like to remind you of your identity. And this evening, the same story of Chan is what God wants you to be to have. To be reminded of your identity that you were loved, you were created, and you were redeemed by this same God. I would like to end this message by an appeal. Is there any someone here, even just one person here, who doesn't have any knowledge yet about Sabbath, but this evening, it is your first time to hear that the Sabbath day is actually God's way for you to be reminded of your identity. And now, you would like to decide, Lord, I would like to be reminded of my identity. Help me, Lord, and I would like to make a commitment today, tonight, that this Sabbath day, I will make the time for you alone. Because I would like to be with that God who owns me. If you are, if you are that someone, can you please stand wherever you are? If you are that someone, can you please stand wherever you are? Don't be ashamed. If it's your first time to hear about the Sabbath and you would like to make a commitment with God and, told, and tell him, Lord, I would like to be with you this Sabbath day. And every Sabbath day, I would like to be with you because you owns me. You owned me. You can stand wherever you are. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I know, Lord, that most of the times we live in the shadow of others' expectations, in the shadow of this world, in the shadow of what the world wants us to do. But right now, Lord, you reminded us that we are not of this world. We belong to you. Thank you, Lord, for telling us that like John, you loved us so much, you created us, you redeemed us, and you would like to tell us this evening that we do not belong to what we do, but we belong to you, and it is the reason why we need to remember the Sabbath day. I know, Lord, this truth is strike even one person in this room. May please work in, the, in his heart or in her heart. Continually convict her of this truth, O oh Lord. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. And thank you, Lord, once again for this truth. In Jesus' name, amen.